My name is Jennifer Nagel. I teach philosophy at the University of Toronto, and today I want to talk to you about the Gettier problem. This problem gets its name from the philosopher Edmund Gettier, who published a very short and famous paper on it in 1963. In his paper, Gettier sets out to attack the dominant theories of knowledge of his day, which were committed to a three-part analysis or definition of knowledge. According to this analysis, a person or subject, who's conventionally called S, knows a proposition, let's call it P, if and only if the following three conditions all hold. P is true, S believes that P, and S is justified in believing that P. This three-part recipe is known as the JTB, or Justified True Belief, Analysis of Knowledge. The first two conditions are pretty uncontroversial. Knowledge only latches onto truths, and you need full confidence or belief to know. If you just have a hunch, that's not enough. We need the third condition because knowledge demands more than true belief. You may remember pessimistic Pierre from our first video in this series, who wakes up in a windowless room every day believing that it is raining outside. Even on a day when this pessimistic belief is true, it doesn't seem right to say that he knows that it is raining. He lacks justification. The nature of justification is controversial. Different JTB theorists had different ideas about it. But let's say it has something to do with having good reasons for your belief. If we don't want the JTB analysis to be a circular definition, we have to say that being justified isn't the same thing as knowing. Gettier suggests one possible difference. He observes that you could, in some sense, be justified in believing something that turns out to be false. For example, if you had lots of misleading evidence that made it look like the right thing to believe. If your justified belief turns out to be true, then the JTB theorist has to say that you have knowledge. You might wonder whether that's right, or more generally, what needs to be added to true belief to get knowledge. That's the Gettier problem. Gettier himself didn't think the JTB analysis was correct, and he came up with some counterexamples to it, where someone has a true and justified belief, but seems not to know. Here's his first counterexample. Smith and Jones are rival job applicants. Gettier doesn't say how, but they meet each other, perhaps in a waiting room after their job interviews, waiting to hear who got the job. As they're maybe starting to get bored, Jones counts out loud how many coins he has in his pocket. Exactly 10, they discover. Jones puts the 10 coins back in his pocket as the president of the company comes into the room. The president congratulates Jones, announcing that he's a great fit for the position. As Smith leaves the room, disappointed, here's something that he believes. Jones, who has 10 coins in his pocket, will get the job. From this, Smith concludes that the man who will get the job has 10 coins in his pocket. And that's our key proposition, P. Right now, it might seem that Smith even knows that P, knows that the man who will get the job has 10 coins in his pocket. But there's a twist. For some reason, at the last minute, the company ends up hiring Smith, not Jones. And unbeknownst to Smith, he happens to have 10 coins in his pocket as well. So when Smith believes that the man who will get the job has 10 coins in his pocket, what he believes is true because Smith will get the job and Smith has 10 coins in his pocket. It's also justified because Smith has good reasons for thinking that Jones will get the job and that Jones has 10 coins in his pocket. But does Smith actually know that the man who will get the job has 10 coins in his pocket? It seems not. Smith is wrong about who will get the job and doesn't know how many coins are in his own pocket. If Smith has a justified, true belief in our key proposition, but doesn't know it, then the JTB analysis is wrong. Philosophers now use the label Gettier case for any story that illustrates the possibility of justified true belief without knowledge. It turns out that there are many such cases, often simpler than Gettier's original. Suppose that Smith wonders what time it is and glances at the clock on the wall, which clearly shows the time as three o'clock. Looking at the clock is a perfectly reasonable way of telling time, so Smith has a justified belief. 
What he doesn't know is that this clock is broken and its hands haven't moved in days. But by chance, it is exactly three o'clock right now. Does Smith actually know the time as he looks at the broken clock? Back in 1948, Bertrand Russell just used this case to illustrate the possibility of true belief without knowledge. But looking back on it now, we can say something stronger. It's a case of justified true belief without knowledge. It's a Gettier case. In fact, there are some even older Gettier cases in the history of philosophy. The 8th century Indian philosopher Dharmachara tells a story in which a fire has just been lit to roast some meat. The fire hasn't yet produced any smoke, but the meat has attracted a swarm of insects. A distant observer looks at the cloud of insects, mistakes it for smoke, and judges that a fire is burning at that spot. Dharmottara suggests that this distant observer doesn't know that there's a fire burning. Looking back on this story, we can use it as a counterexample to the JTB analysis of knowledge. If it doesn't work to analyze knowledge as justified true belief, what does work? You may have noticed that the Gettier cases we've talked about so far have some features in common, and you might think that we could take account of those features and add a simple patch to the JTB analysis to fix it up. But, as we'll see in the next two videos in this series, the problem of deciding what to add to true belief to get knowledge turns out to be surprisingly difficult.